We have to start with those jobs numbers that came out on Friday. A lot more than expected, 339,000 jobs. At the same time, we also had an increase in uh, wages and we had an increase in unemployment. What do you make of this surprise number, I think, for most people? Look, I think these are strong numbers uh, in total. 339,000 jobs is a lot. There were upward revisions for the previous two months. We've always known that the monthly unemployment rate is a very noisy series. That's especially true in May when you got all the seasonal adjustments going on with respect to the kids who are leaving school and looking for uh, summer uh, jobs. So I think you have to read this report as uh, strong. I think the forecasting community's got to do a little soul searching. They've been low on this report for 14 months uh, in a row. That has got to suggest that there's something about the underlying strength of the economy that they're missing. Or another way to put it is that they are exaggerating the impact and efficacy of monetary policy in uh, slowing uh, the economy down. So I read these as a strong report, and I think the general tendency of the data has been very much uh, towards saying that the economy, at least for this while, has a fair amount of uh, robustness in it. Uh, going beyond the jobs numbers out this week, the other big development with the economy, I dare say, is that package that did make it through, actually, the Congress, that took care of the debt ceiling problem. I wonder what you make of that package, and maybe more specifically, what it means for the fiscal policy of the United States of America. David, before I say something about the debt limit uh, issues, I want to just say that with that behind us, with these employment uh, figures, with the general evidence of robustness in the economy, I think the lower risk strategy is for the Fed to raise rates uh, in June. It's a close call. And if they don't raise rates in June, I think they have to be open to the possibility that they may have to raise rates by 50 basis points in July if the economy continues to stay way hot and if uh, inflation figures are robust. I saw that some of the governors have been saying that maybe the Fed can move to a mode of raising rates by 25 basis points only every other meeting. It's certainly possible that that's a mode that they can move into, but for there to be any sense of commitment uh, to that, given the risks, would, I think, be repeating the kind of mistakes that the Fed has made repeatedly over the last uh, several uh, years. I vacillated after the first run of serious banking uh, issues, but seeing where we are now, seeing the general picture in markets, I think we are again in a situation where the risks of overheating the economy are the primary risks that the Fed needs uh, to be mindful of. And of course, that's just reinforced by the fact that we've put the debt limit and the potential loss of confidence uh, from it uh, very much uh, behind us by reaching uh, this deal. Look, the thing I'm worried about coming out of this deal is not what happens in the near term. The IRS provisions there, I think, are really a serious uh, error, and we're missing a chance to catch lots of people who have just cheated on their taxes who are going to go undiscovered. And because we're not investing enough, we're going to probably have even more people playing uh, the audit lottery. And that's a mistake, a serious mistake. But I think the really big issue that focus is going to need to turn to is the long-run fiscal picture of the country. CBO says that we're headed to a projected deficit more than twice as large as the one we had when we set off the Simpson-Bowles uh, process, more than 75 percent larger than the one that was there when Bill Clinton uh, came in as uh, president. 
And there are all sorts of reasons to think that the CBO estimate is way optimistic. I don't believe for a moment that one month, three month treasury bill rates are gonna average 2.3% over the next uh, decade. I don't believe for a moment that defense spending as a share of GDP is gonna fall by 20% over uh, the next uh, decade. If anybody believes that 100% of the Trump tax cuts are going to be terminated when they come do come up for renewal in 2025, I'd be happy to make them a bet or even happier to sell them a bridge because they're very gullible. So I think if you look at the numbers in the right serious way, you're looking at projected budget deficit that could approach or exceed 10% of uh, GDP. Well, that's fascinating, Larry, because I, I don't want to say you're sounding a little bit like Kevin McCarthy, but you are concerned about the deficit and the debt. Let me talk to you about how we should look at that problem. You just talked about the, uh, the ratio of the debt uh, to the GDP. You wrote a paper with Jason Furman a few years back saying it really is the question of the size of the debt service against GDP. There's a report in Bloomberg this week that said that's what Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, is looking at, and that as she looks at that ratio, it's not that disturbing. Should we be disturbed looking at it through that lens? Look, uh, when you look at it in terms of debt service, David, what that depends on, obviously, is what the level of the interest rate is. And if you believe CBO that the one month uh, or three month Treasury rate is going to stay below two and a half for 10 years, then you can be serene about uh, debt service. But that's a kind of a summa can opener uh, approach. My guess, given all the debt that we're accumulating, given what the Fed's going to have to do to contain uh, inflation, is that rates are going to have to be substantially higher than that. And if you take a more realistic uh, approach, you are looking at debt service levels that, whether you use the nominal interest rate or the real interest rate, are getting very close to the levels that Furman and I uh, said uh, would be uh, would be dangerous. So I think it's absolutely right to focus on debt service uh, as uh, the issue, but we have, in part because of all the massive QE, where the Fed, which is after all an arm of the government, has bought up all the long-term bonds, we're now running the country's finances like a homeowner with a floating rate mortgage. And if you've got a floating rate mortgage, it's not enough to say that my debt service payments are low right now. You got to think about what could happen uh, in uh, the future. So I don't think that there's a basis for um, high serenity. And I look at all kinds of shocks that could happen uh, coming out of defense spending, coming out of the need to reconstruct Ukraine, coming out of climate situations that look more serious, coming out of the fact that I saw some numbers yesterday that suggests that there's probably a one in three chance that we're gonna have a, another COVID level health event within the next decade. I do think we've got to be preparing for contingencies and this is a time when we need to be reloading uh, in terms of the f in, in terms of uh, the fiscal situation. So, Larry, finally, put this all together, if you would. Take, take the really robust jobs numbers that we've talked about. Put it together with what you're admonishing the Fed. They should be at least willing to put on the table 50 basis point rate hikes in order to get our arms around inflation, given how strong the economy is. Where are you now on recession? Because people have been talking about recession for a long time. You've been talking about it. I've been talking about it. A lot of people have. We keep putting out the time for it. Uh, where are you on the likelihood of recession, and when does it hit? David, I... I I still think uh, that it is soft landings are very unlikely, that it's unlikely that inflation will come down to the two range without an economic uh, downturn. And in a way, it's a policy choice when that downturn uh, comes. And we have put it, we have uh, put it off. 
The worry is that when you delay taking your medication and then you only take part of your medication till you feel better, you don't really get cured and there ends up being more pain uh, down the road. It sure doesn't look to me like we're going near recession um, before the end of the summer. And I, if I had to guess right now, I think the Fed will end up doing enough to restrain inflation. And that's going to mean a quite soft economy sometime in uh, 2024. But the dynamics are very difficult to gauge.